So here I am. I am outside of the Dharma a, a retreat here in Lava Hot Springs, Idaho, US. And uh, this is where I'm about to embark on a 10 day Vipassana journey uh, where we basically meditate for 10 days in noble silence. No, no, so noble silence meaning uh, no, no communication. Uh, no gestures, no holding the doors open, not even acknowledging that anybody else is there. I don't know how many people are going to be here, I've no idea. Um, but 10 days of silence. I think I can handle the 10 days of silence. It's uh, the meditation is going to be the difficult part, knowing that I'm going to be alone in my thoughts uh, for that time. And uh, this is quite a drive down here from Boise, Idaho. And it's funny, like I've, I've been looking forward to this, looking forward to this, just a disconnect from the world and the noise. But as I was driving here, when I'd look at the map, it said you're, you're, you're two hours out and then an hour out, then 30 minutes. 15 minutes it just started becoming more real and I was getting more anxious and uh, the voice of reason and compromise just kept coming up into my head you don't have to do this like you could probably just check into a hotel <laughs> no one would know and uh, you could do the same thing uh, but obviously that's not what we're here for you know the one thing that scares the shit out of me is uh, just being alone with my thoughts because one of the reasons why I'm so distracted or so addicted to movement and to work um, is because I'm trying to get distraction from my thoughts you know whenever I, I always say I, I don't like to think too much because it makes me think too much and uh, you know I, I'm, I've mentioned before I've got low dopamine levels low uh, GABA levels so I have to do a lot of things all the time and kind of get addicted to stress just to feel normal, just to bear the day, just to deal with life, you know. But it isn't getting me anywhere, you know, being addicted to work and getting addicted to stress, especially when you work with your partner. And I was thinking about... Uh, sunshine my, my partner as well on the way down here thinking you know I don't acknowledge her enough of course like I'll try to open the door for her when she gets in the car but then you know you go back to routine and then all of a sudden you forget and it's the same thing especially when you're working together you know you're always like is this done is that done why not why isn't it done why was this late instead of acknowledging all the qualities of contribution you know and sometimes unfortunately you know your work life filters into your love life you know and it's not good so uh, I want to be a better person to be around I want to be a better person for others but more than anything the reason why I'm here is I want to be better for myself I want to be more forgiving to myself people have said I'm brutal to myself and um, you know it's made me think about that and I am I give myself a hard time. If I'm late, I give myself a hard time. If I forget something, I give myself a hard time. Uh, a lot more than I should. I don't give myself any slack. And here I am, I'm trying to biohack my health, I'm trying to reverse the biological age process, you know, with all the ancestral wisdom and today's technology and what I put in my mouth and exercising daily. But heart disease is the biggest killer through stress and I'm a very stress stressful person and I can't keep going on in life chasing 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 without having an experience you know because I'm not having any experience I'm always trying to deliver something I'm always trying to get something I'm always chasing something or running away from something but not experiencing anything and I want to experience. Is this going to be the answer? Who fucking knows? Am I going to be able to see myself through this? Who fucking knows? I think I can. Like I said, the silence is going to be easy. I deal with major back problems from motocross. 
I don't complain about it. I don't moan about it. But the majority of my day is kind of dealing with that subconscious pain. It's it's there, but I've got used to it. And, um, you know, massage therapy, chiropractors, acupuncture, you know, it all has its band-aid but it doesn't help the root cause. So being in a kind of a stress position, meditating from 4 a.m. in the morning, apparently that's when you, you know, you get the gong, the alarm, and uh, you start meditating and then you go straight into it. And you're pretty much meditating until, I think it's like 9.30 in the evening or nine o'clock in the evening, it's lights out at 9.30. So um, yeah, that's a, a little bit of a, a, a worry. I think I'll be okay with the two small vegan meals a day even though I've never done that before. I've done fasting, but I've always eaten a lot of protein and a lot of food when I have broken the fast. But I'm assuming because we're not doing any form of activity, uh, it'll make it a little bit easier. Um, you know, I'm not gonna be expiring any calories. So we'll, we'll, we'll see about that. Um, it's gonna be difficult to get out of my routine, I can tell you that much, because I'm so used to doing cardio twice a day, weight training, five, sometimes six days a week, and then work, 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 first thing in the morning until late in the evening, sometimes a lot of the time weekends as well. So it's gonna be very difficult, I think, in that regards. You know, this is no fucking retreat where you come and chill out and have a massage. This is alone with your thoughts, cross-legged, and that is it. No eye contact, no notepad, no phone, no book, no exercise, nothing other than sitting and meditating. We'll see how this goes. But I just sent Sunshine, my partner, a little uh, message as well because I really, really do appreciate her. She is everything to me and without her there's no way I'd be able to do this but she is part of the reason why I want to do this to be a better person to be a better partner and um, you know having her there helps this cause it's uh, it's like a form of accountability you know so anyways there's a lot of cars here um, looks like someone slept in that car over there the sleeping bag in the passenger seat I don't know but I've got my sleeping bag and uh, I got my beer essentials which is basically clothes a torch I was told to bring a torch I'm I guess I'm gonna see you on the flip side and let you know what this was like either in three days five days or hopefully ten days I will I would have stuck it out um, I know it's not gonna be easy I'm expecting maybe the third and fourth day to be very, very difficult. And then maybe the eighth and ninth day to be very, very difficult. So I'm trying to mentally prepare myself. I know going through the unexpected is what usually throws people off. And I usually, ex unfortunately, I expect the worst. Not being a pessimist, but I just try to be a realist. And it's helped me now. And what I feel is a massive amount of nervous energy in me, anxiety. But what I have found, even though every time I get nervous and I have doubt, with that feeling, I usually bring out the best in me. If I'm gonna do a seminar, a talk, and I'm extremely nervous, it usually turns out to be my best talks. And when I remember when I was racing motocross, I'd be so nervous on the start line. And those were usually my better races. And same when I've done Iron Man and uh, stuff, like, stuff like that I'm like shit am I gonna finish this am I gonna finish this am I gonna do this and then I kind of turn that nervous energy into a visualization of reality and I visualize myself finishing it so I, I visualized myself walking out of here filming in 10 days time or 11 days it's the 11th day we get out I think it's 10 11 nights I can't bloody remember it'll probably all go into one but anyway here goes nothing Let's give this a shot and see what comes out on the other side. Can't get any fucking worse. I am back. Back to reality. 
don't know if I want this as my reality though. So uh, I'm out of the 10 day silent retreat. However, it seems like I can't do math because I was in it a little bit longer. The first day, even though we did meditate, it was mainly registration showing us the rules, our headquarters where we were living, uh, where the meditation was to be, where we were to eat, where there was a walking path, all that sort of stuff. Um, so that was day zero, not day one, day zero. And then yesterday was day 10, supposedly. And then today we started the day at 4 a.m. with uh, meditation and uh, a discourse and and breakfast and get our belongings and pack up and head on out. So I was gonna do a video first thing this morning while still on the property, but it was dark. So I figured, you know what, I'll wait till I come to the nearest town, get myself a cup of quaff, decaffeinated, and um, and do this video for you. So this is the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. Hello? That's not me, that's the person over there. But anyway, um, you know, I've had some challenges in my life. Um, I've got chucked out of the US, I've done Ironman, I've done ultra marathon, uh, all sorts of challenges, but nothing, the, all those things pale in comparison to what this was all about. And you know, it wasn't a physical challenge as such, except I did have a horrendously bad back during the meditations. Um, it was definitely a mental challenge, no stimulation whatsoever. You know, it's a silent retreat and I, I'm a little bit of a recluse anyway, so I thought, well, not talking and making eye contact will be easy. It was really difficult because you don't consider listening to voices through music as a form of communication or reading books, you know, words of others, a form of communication. And then on top of that, uh, yeah, you do talk to your wife. Uh, you do, you are on the call uh, calls, you know, um, speaking to co-workers all the time you know there is a form of communication there so I, that was more difficult than anticipated you know several times I did want to say to someone god are you struggling with this is are you finding this hard uh but obviously you can't you just stay in your own world day three was uh probably the most day three and day seven I think no day eight was it day seven? No, day three and day seven were definitely the most difficult. Day three, because there is just zero stimulation. You know, you are meditating, and when you're not meditating, you're not reading, you're not listening to anything uh, or voices. There's no music. You know, I love music. Whenever I'm driving, I'm always listening to music or an uh, audiobook or podcast, something, something, something. No stimulation. Um, so not being able to read anything. I probably read my toothpaste tube five times. I read my shower gel 10 times, you know, not being able to read anything or write anything down or listen to anything and exercise, couldn't exercise. Um, you know, there was just no stimulation whatsoever. It was tough. Just picking up this phone this morning and switching it on, I, I thought there was something different that, you know, there was an update, there was a new app. I'm like, what is wrong with the interface of my phone? There was nothing changed. It just felt so alien. Like this is the longest I've gone without a phone for 20 odd years. Uh, the longest I've ever gone without speaking forever, ever, you know, so it was definitely very alien. And, uh, you know, the voice of reason was coming in my head on the third day saying, look, just get out of here. You know, you've got what you've wanted. Um, I think you'd be OK. You could just even check into a hotel, blah, blah, blah. Just voice of reason, voice of reason, trying to convince me. But um, again, I just thought, no, this is craving because we're taught in the teachings from uh, Gwenka, sir. Uh, Gwenka, who was uh, teaching the Vipassana through video, he's passed away now. And he says, you know, we are always attached, attached to craving or aversion, 
craving or aversion. We always want, 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 or we always try to run away from something. We always want that perfect physique, or we are always trying to run away from the scales. We want that house, but we want to try to, I, I don't know, we're always trying to avert something. And uh, a lot of the time it's clinging, craving, clinging, craving, aversion. And uh, I just thought to myself, this is just a version. This is a version from me getting away from the thoughts in my head and being with myself and a clinging and craving to get back to connection, environment, society. Um, so I, I just figured, no, 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 you've got to stick it out. What helped as well is just having other people there, knowing that they're probably going through the same thing. A couple of people did jump off uh, the course. Um, some, you know, At the time I was thinking... I don't blame you, but now I think, I wonder if they regret it because I'm very glad that I stayed the entire 10 days. And it was so strange because like on day three or day four, I remember actually hearing the wind for the first time, like very, very distinctively clear hearing the wind. I was like, God, and, I, and not just the wind, but I could hear it brushing through the grass and, you know, with just so much cloudy, which is always there but I just never hear it. When I drove out right now, when I saw the mountains, it was as if I'd seen the mountains here for the very, very first time. Like when I went to Ears Rock in Australia and I saw that rock for the first time, when I went to the Himalayas and I saw them for the first time, and uh, you know when I saw the Sawtooth Mountains for the first time, when I came out, it was like I'd seen these mountains for the very, very first time. It was so beautiful. And that that was some of the things that I noticed when I was in there. When we'd have our lunch, when we'd finish our lunch break, we'd go for a little walk. There's a little path there, and it's funny. On the first day, I saw this path. I thought, "Oh my God, it's tiny. This is so small." But then, after about five days, I was like, "This is plenty big enough. We're always wanting more. It's never enough. It's never good enough." And um, Yes, while I was there, I I would notice like the stars in the sky in the evening walking back to our head, you know, our, our sleeping quarters. And I would notice during the day, the cloud formations, the shape. It's like time had stood still and I was appreciating things for once. And like on day six or something, I was noticing things on the walk, on this walk that I'd done so many times, so many times. But now I'm seeing things for the first time. And I, I just made me wonder how much do we go through life just not experiencing, not, in, not seeing anything because we're always running towards that destination. But uh, the fasting was easy. Eating two meals a day, not a problem, not a problem at all. And eating plant-based, um, easy, not a problem. You know, obviously I, I probably dropped a lot of weight. God, shut the fuck up, will you? There you go. <laughs> I'm back to normal already. <laughs> I'm supposed to... Well, this is what we're taught, is observe, don't judge. And uh, during the meditation, we're focusing on our sensations. So the sensations, whether they be good or bad, we're not trying to ignore them. We're not trying to get rid of them. We're, um, if it's bliss, we're not trying to you know crave more of it. We're there just to observe because we will have these sensations every day in our life. If somebody has done us wrong, we observe our sensations. Maybe we our temperature goes up. Uh, maybe we perspire. Maybe our heart rate increases. So we observe. So by focusing on the sensations, because the sensations will always be attached to whatever external object infiltrates us. And then we observe that sense, observe that sensation. So that's what we are to practice now, uh, moving forward. Sensation, sensation, sensations, and whatever sensation that is, we don't try to uh, uh, have aversion from it. We don't try to um, crave it, want clinging attachment to it. We just live in total equanimity. So just total equanimity and awareness of that observation and know that it will pass it will pass it will pass never think ne nothing stays the same you know we jump in a river and then we jump in that same river again 10 minutes later we think it's the same river it's not the same river we look at a light bulb we think it's the same light that is shining all the time well no it isn't because you get an electric bill at the end of the month 
so it can't be the same and it's the same you know with with a candle a light it's always changing and our environment and we are always changing so whatever misery that comes up know that it'll pass it will pass so um you know it, it, it's given me a very good understanding it's crazy that the educated mind does think this can't work it's so simple but it's the simplicity in the practice and the application is that is the hard part we have to apply and we have to continue to apply with patience so one of the good things that Goenka said in one of his discourses is that think of your mind as an elephant or a wild bull it's very very powerful and it can be very very destructive your brain can be or is more powerful than a wild elephant or wild bull but with a lot of patience and application it can be tamed and uh, you know for the first even even on the last day but on the first five days especially my, you know during the meditation my mind is wandering it's bringing up old arguments and disagreements and people that may have done me wrong and all this craziness all this craziness is coming up and that's how powerful the mind can be and what he calls these miseries is sankaras you know that's sang sankrit san sanskrit sorry and uh, an old buddhist uh, language that he says sankara 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 so we have these sankaras come up in our brains all the time all the time all the time and if we can live in equanimity right now with anything that goes on in our life if anybody does us wrong or if we get pissed off we get angry we have a craving whatever if we can deal with that with perfect equanimity and just awareness and don't react to it it will help us rid ourselves of the deeper rooted problems in our memory bank from years past so um i'm so happy that i've done this because i'm one of those people that will manifest these things uh you know something into mole you know molehills into mountains and i'm very very uptight i'm always rushing to get somewhere on time i'm judging people because of their laziness uh because they're not punctual and whatever um and that's not on them it's me it's my perception it's how i allow it to infiltrate myself so um this is definitely the hardest thing that i've ever done but probably the most rewarding so um i'm gonna do another video on this on why you should do vipassana and a 10-day silent retreat because i think everybody should do this and how to survive it because i don't want you to be one of those people that leaves because it's very very easy to leave there's there's so many people that i thought god this would be so good for this person but those very people would find it the hardest you know we're very high achievers very highly stimulated we need stimulation we need distraction we need stress but we don't we think we do and we've just gotten away from our ancestral wisdom unfortunately and we've just you know we as a human being cannot keep up with the environmental changes that's happening to our race you know so uh you know we just got to be better people better to each other but better to ourselves more than anything but yeah so uh back to the real world now but i'm going to ease myself into this continue with my meditation practices but i probably could do with a, a nice a nice steak steak and egg breakfast but anyway until next time namaste